Big Mac absolutely hated delivering Granny Smith's homemade apple pies to Symphiana. She was either trying to hit on him or always snobbing him. In fact, Big Mac thought she would sleep with anything that had a pulse. Rumor was that she had invited a young colt inside of her home, who was doing some scout works for the official scouts. Association of Ponyville. A lot of ponies thought it wasn't true, but it kept conversations interesting. The long walk to Cynthia's house began with a short walk down the edge of Ponyville from Sweet Apple Acres. The path was rocky, since it was off-road, which made it, it that much more difficult. Then from there on, it was mostly uphill. Trotting along the outskirts of the centered business district of Ponyville, the path that tagged along the outskirts of Ponyville was also poorly maintained, as it as it had too many potholes and ditches that Big Mac cared to count. Trot, 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 trot. But the worst part was Mirage. She was a sweet, small little pony. That was very easy on the eyes. She was also an earth pony, akin to Big Macintosh, except for her mane, just like Applejack's was golden. She kept it well looked after and tied it off with a purple hair band. Her coat, however, was light blue, the same shades as the beautiful sky that was overlooking them. But the most outstanding quality about her was her eyes. Her eyes were one of the darkest shades of blue he had ever seen. They gave off an aura that could only be matched by heaven itself. Yet, even though they were one of the sexiest, sweetest pairs of eyes that he ever had ever seen, they gave a look of sadness and despair. They were hard to look into without feeling the pain that she felt inside of her. Big Macintosh tried his hardest to push Mirage out of his thoughts, though he didn't know about what with. Ah, Miss Cheerly, that would do the trick. There was a future with Cheerly. She was a friendly, funny, and extremely intelligent being, a school teacher and all. And speaking of that point, being a teacher also meant she was fantastic with fowls. She knew how to treat a fowl right, and knew when things were about to turn for the worst. When having a fowl, heck, maybe if Cheerly retired early, she could homeschool the fowl they might have. That would be a massive plus for when they decided to have a family. Cheerly was extremely loving and caring. She could even get a little kinky when she felt safe and was in the right mood. She could pretend to be a school teacher, a nurse, even a complete stranger, but Big Mac kink was bondage. Bondage was also a favorite of Cheer Lee. First, she would talk to you in a calming tone, and she would grab you by the hoof and pull you into her bedroom. She reaches under her large king-size bed and pulls out a box full of gags and bounds. She would tie you up, bounding you to the mattress of a bed. Then the fun stuff would begin. The last time Cheerly had let her sexy side out, she did exactly that. She had missed the entire day of school, quickly calling in a replacement teacher right before Big Mac swooped her on to his back and took her to the bedroom. From then on, the relationship had become more serious, and they started taking things slow. Though the primary school teacher had the sweetest kisses in the world. The taste of her lips was like receiving a kiss from the gods above. Going muzzle to muzzle with her was like entering the heavenly golden gates. Walking on the clouds of the oasis was set upon there were a few stallions out there who would give their hind legs and their cutie marks for just a single kiss from Cheer Lee, but Big Mac received over more than a dozen from her. 
the fact that he had kept his front legs and his cutie mark and still had been able to kiss his favorite pony made him feel special. Very special, indeed. Big Mac was enjoying the pleasurable memories of his time with Miss Cheerley. He was even starting to imagine what would happen when they both met each other again, when he heard a little voice just off to his right. May I walk with you, Big Mac? It was a little mare, who he loved but hated at the same time. It was Mirage. Mirage was trotting along beside Big Macintosh, and as much as he wanted to tell her to turn and tell her no, he knew in his heart that it would only make the current situation worse. Saying no to Mirage is like kicking a manticore. The road belonged to Mirage. She would refuse to go away even if she was told to leave, and the fact is that she would make every step to Cynthia's house pure misery if she was aggravated. So he just trotted along, thinking of what to say to the poor little mare. But the only thing he could possibly say without upsetting Mirage was, Yep. If he had to listen to her rant about something, then it might as well be something close to pleasant. Well, my name is Mirage. The blue-eyed mare said in a seductive tone. She came up close to Big Mac, almost touching him. Her eyes had now taken a very purple, making them almost glow a little. Big Mac wasn't really comfortable with how close she was, however, and gave nothing but a com contempt snort. Big Mac just kept his eyes set out on the road in front of him. Not saying a single word, Mirage giggled. <laughs> you don't really talk much, do you? Nope, replied the big red stallion. You look like a shy sort of stallion. Is that why you don't talk? Because you're shy? It wasn't true. Big Mac wanted to turn around, get right up to her face, and tell her the bugger off. But that was obviously going to risk upsetting her, and that was unsafe. Yep. That's what I like about you. You're strong and hardworking, but you're shy. Shy ponies, they are so much fun to be with. Said Mirage in, a fami in her familiar, alluring tone. Again, Big Macintosh just snorted his way out of it. You know, I have two bottles of hard cider jack. And this is a quiet walk. You must be thirsty. How about you let your legs rest for a bit and have a drink with me? Suggested Mirage. Nope, replied Big Macintosh. Sorry, I bet you already have a mare with you. You have a gal, don't you? Mirage pouted. Yep, replied Big Mac. A smirk appeared on his face. Mirage got up close to his ears and whispered seductively. Well, I won't tell her, if you won't tell her. Hell nope, Big Mac scowled. You are the loyal type, aren't you? She has got to be grateful. You are strong, shy, loyal, and a very good looking. She is a very lucky mare indeed, said Mirage. Mm-hmm, was all Big Mac could say. It isn't disloyal to just pull up and chat to only pony for a bit. I'm sure she could understand that, said Mirage. I mean, is it wrong to want some pony nice to talk to you and, well, is it so wrong? Asked Mirage, her voice taking a sad tone. Is it really that wrong to want what all ponies want? To feel love? Asked Mirage, now beginning to cry. Then all of a sudden, Mirage's boyish changed to a sa tone of alarm. You don't want to go up that, up that road. Something bad happened there a long time ago. Trot, 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 trot. Please, stop, please. Trot, 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 trot. Don't leave me, please. I am so lonely. Begged Mirage. Now on her hunches. Mirage stayed where she was as Big Mac went onwards. The short ways up the road, Big Mac spotted a small gravestone just off 
to the right of the dirt path. Big Mac stopped in front of the gravestone, stared at the stone. All around the gravestone, there were forget-me-not flowers, and the inscriptions upon the stone read, Rest in peace, our beloved Mirage. She lost her life on her 18th birthday to fault of a wagon accident, least we forget. I'm sorry, Mirage, whispered Big Mac, his eyes now starting to well up. The story went that Mirage, healthy and fit, one of the county's fastest wagon pullers, one night she had gone and got herself drunk on hard cider jack and got into a race with two other ponies. She went along this road, but hit a pothole, sending her and her wagon flying off course. She landed and the wagon crushed the life out of her. They got her to the hospital, but it wasn't enough. Mirage, now a spirit, wanted the, the one pony she loved to spend eternity with her along the long, lonely road. Yep, Big Macintosh had a lot to live for. And Miss Cheer Lee was playing a big part in his life. As he started thinking of, of Cheer Lee, a single tear ran down his cheek and to the ground, hitting the place where Mirage was gracefully buried. And all at once, Mirage's spirit smiled from a sp for a split second as she realized what had happened and evaporated into the sky. Big Mac now had regrets. Having the party, egging his friends onto racing Mirage. He felt that it was all his fault that Mirage had lost her life, and he couldn't fix it any more anyway. Another tear hit the lonely grave. A bright light flashed from behind him. But as he turned, he caught the last glimpse of Mirage's spirit floating towards the sky. A happy smile on her face. She was she was finally going to heaven. And as he watched, he could have sworn the inscription on her grave had changed. It said, Rest in peace, our beloved Mirage. She lost her life on her 18th birthday in a wagon accident. It was nobody's fault. Least we forget. As he began to think of Chile yet again, he turned and made his way to Cynthia's house, thinking of some excuse to leave as early as he could before she started hitting on him again. Trot, trot, trot.